martial arts is in the audience. <laughs> we hope you enjoy this 50th anniversary screening of this seminal film. Tickets are still available for the rest of our series. We hope you will join us. Next Saturday is gonna be a madhouse of 60s sci-fi fun at the Los Angeles Theater. We're presenting the 1968 Planet of the Apes. Ooh, I know. Comedian Dana Gold's Dr. Z joins us as our screening host alongside actor Lou Wagner, who played Lucius in the film. Don't miss Charleston Heston in this wild cult classic with one of the most famous endings in film history. Probably you haven't seen it, you didn't, didn't go for that line. <laughs> so we'll see you next Saturday. In the evening, get ready for a glamorous affair at the LA Theater as we present the Philadelphia story. This stylish romantic comedy stars Katherine Hepburn as the icy Philadelphia socialite Tracy Lord, a role that revived Hepburn's career, establishing her as one of the strongest women in Hollywood. Hepburn is dressed to thrill in this film, so we're excited to have Kimberly Truler, a film and fashion historian, host for us. Make sure you wear your vintage vest. We have vintage people too, okay. <laughs> we kick off our last weekend of last remaining seats on June 17th with a Pride Month matinee of Auntie Mame at the Million Dollar Theater. <laughs> In her most famous performance, Rosalind Russell plays the flamboyant title character of the free-spirited socialite Maine Dennis. This film has become a special favorite of the LGBTQ plus community. Its message of appreciating free expression, living life to the fullest, and loving all is as relevant and important as ever. And for our final screening, film critic, historian, and friend of the Conservancy, Leonard Malton, joins us for Albert Hitchcock's psychological thriller, Vertigo. <laughs> I see we have a winner. <laughs> Consistently ranked as one of the top 10 films of all time, this movie becomes an immersive experience on the big screen. Set in some of San Francisco's most beautiful locations, shot in vivid technicolor, a sweeping musical score, and masterful filmmaking designed to keep you at the edge of your seat until the very end. All of our screenings, including tonight's, are followed by free Q&A sessions about the historic theaters. So please stay in your seats after the film if you're interested in learning more. Last remaining seats would not be possible without the generous sponsors who make this program a reality. Please join me in thanking our series star sponsor, Hollywood Foreign Press Association. <laughs> For our other sponsors, please hold your applause until I announce all their names. Series supporting sponsors, the Walter J. and Holly O. Thompson Foundation. Producer series sponsors, Clifton's Republic, Comcast NBC Universal, Tom Dolby and Family, Grand Central Market, Connie Humberger Bequest, and Paramount Pictures. Media sponsors, LAist, Lemley Theaters, and Los Angeles Theater. Community partners, Downtown Center BID, DTLA Crowd, and Historic Core BID. Let's give a big round of applause to all of you. <laughs> and please join me in giving a very special thank you to Kathy and Steve Needleman, our opening night screening sponsors who helped make this evening possible. And Steve is in the house, so let's make a laugh. <laughs> Friends, your support of last remaining seats helps preserve, promote, and keep historic places like the Orpheum. And now the important question, how many of you are Conservancy members? We appreciate each and every one of you, thank you. Last remaining seats is our biggest member drive of the year, and we hope to get 20 new members tonight. Should be easy, right? Not everybody clap, but they remember. We know where you are.
also check out our membership table in the lobby to learn about our on-site promotions for new and renewing members. And now it is my pleasure to introduce you to the Peabody award-winning blogger behind Angry Asian Man, co-host of the podcast They Call Us Bruce, and co-author of the New York Times bestseller book, Rise, A Pop History of Asian America from the 90s to Now. Let's give a warm welcome to our screening host, Phil Yu. So exciting. Um, I gotta say, tonight is a no-brainer for me when they ask me to come and uh, take part. First off, huge thank you to the LA Conservancy for inviting me to be part of this evening. It's my absolute honor and privilege to introduce this 50th anniversary screening of my favorite movie, Enter the Dragon, starring Bruce Lee. Now, just out of curiosity, how many people are here to watch this movie for the first time? I am so, I'm legit so excited for you and your encouragement. So, what can I say about Enter the Dragon? In the history of cinema, when it comes to kicking ass, <laughs> movies can be divided into two eras, before Bruce and after Bruce. <laughs> it's hard to overstate Bruce Lee's impact on action movies. You know, today, we, we take it for granted. You watch a Hollywood action movie, your, your hero is gonna throw some punches, gonna throw some kicks. It has to look good. Bruce Lee was the first to really elevate movie ass kicking into an art. <laughs> So by that measure, on a global level, he is arguably one of the most influential figures in cinema, and probably the greatest ambassador of martial arts in human history. Uh, but to this kid, to this Asian American kid, growing up in an era where there were few pop culture figures who looked like me, Bruce Lee was more than a hero. He was a superhero. The first time I saw Bruce Lee, the first time I experienced Bruce Lee was the early 80s when a local TV station ran a, a week-long marathon of Bruce Lee movies. I was blown away. I could not believe a human being like this existed. I, I, I was actually kind of mad. I feel like the grown-ups in my life had failed me. <laughs> Why did nobody tell me about Bruce Lee before? Don't you think I would want to know about an Asian guy who was this cool, this strong, who stood up to bullies, who could kick this much ass? I would want to know about that. So, uh, a, a few key facts about Enter the Dragon. It was directed by Robert Klaus. Screenplay by Michael Allen. This was the very first ho Hollywood Hong Kong co-production between Warner Brothers and uh, Golden Harvest Studios in Hong Kong. Bruce, after uh, kind of a frustrating attempt to break into Hollywood and not finding the roles available to him, went to Hong Kong to try his luck there, broke out huge box office success, and Enter the Dragon was his ticket back to Hollywood. The plot, the plot doesn't matter. It, <laughs> it, does, it does not matter. Look at the plot. The, Bruce Lee enters a martial arts tournament organized by a very bad man. Spoiler alert, Bruce kicks everybody's ass. The end. So, so like the plot, there are some undeniably goofy things about this movie, things that have not aged well, and things that were, frankly, probably not so great even in 1973. But the one thing that remains ageless one thing that remains true, then and now, 50 years later, is just how damn cool Bruce Lee was. Over the last 50 years, we've seen dozens upon dozens of heroes hit the screen, action heroes, incredible martial artists. Bruce Lee is the godfather. He's got the moves, he's got the physicality, he's got the physique, whoo, the physique. <laughs> he's got the skills. In fact, honestly, at no point in Enter the Dragon are you under the impression that Lee is in any kind of danger or peril. <laughs> He's like Michael Jordan at the slam dunk contest. He's just saying, you've got this man just go. He's got it covered. 
But what sets Bruce apart from other action heroes actually is his screen presence when he's not fighting. He brings the same level of intensity to his performance, and you cannot take your eyes off him. You can honestly watch the movie with the sound off, still feel the full effect of Bruce Lee. So, as we've noted, this year marks the 50th anniversary of Out of the Dragon. It also marks the 50th anniversary of Bruce Lee's death. Just four weeks before the premiere of Enter the Dragon, he died at the age of 32. So, Enter the Dragon, a film that propelled him to global superstardom and immortalized him as an icon, uh, it inadvertently became his, both his magnum opus and his swan song. So, uh, I will leave you with this quote from a letter Bruce Lee wrote during the production of Enter the Dragon to Ted Ashley, the chairman of Warner Brothers. My 20 years of experience, both in martial, martial arts and acting, has led to the successful harmony of showmanship and genuine, efficient, artful expression. You see, my obsession is to make, pardon the expression, the fuckingest action motion picture that has ever been made. In closing, I will give you my heart, but please do not give me your head only. In return, I, Bruce Lee, will always feel the deepest appreciation for the intensity of your involvement. End quote. So now, 15 years later, here in the Orpheum Theater, Bruce Lee invites you to experience, quote, the fuckingest action motion picture that has ever been made. So thank you and enjoy.